Hey everybody, this is Dave from AskUncleDave.com. Today we're going to do part four of our Netgear X10 AD7200 Wi-Fi um, smart Wi-Fi router, and it's model number R9000. Now this is Netgear's newest router, and it has a lot of great features. First things first, you can run a Plex server off of it. You hook up two USB 3.0 hard drives and you install the server right on to the uh, hard drive. You also put all your movies and TV shows and you're able to use Plex with that server without having a PC running. This Wi-Fi router is running all the time anyway and you can serve up all of your media. Now uh, this is the software that you you use uh, on your Mac or Windows and it's ReadyCloud and it allows you to see your USB uh, connected drives and it also has a shortcut to our admin page. So here's our admin page and uh, this is the Plex media server that I was telling you about. Also it has a Netgear uh, downloader so you can download from uh, BitTorrents, uh, Emu and FTP and HTTP. So if you have a link to some video or document, you can uh, download it right from the firmware uh, inside this. So the other thing is they have the cloud backup and you can back up important uh, documents right up to the cloud. Uh, it has ready share and ready cloud so you can access this router, uh, this firmware here, or even the hard drives from outside of your home as well. Uh, the other thing that it does well is it has a VPN service, and that's what today's video is pretty much going to be about. There's a VPN service so that you can access your router as well as the internet that your router is doing in your home from outside of the house using other computers, mobile devices, as long as they have the open VPN uh, configuration installed on it. And we're going to go over step by step of how these things work. Now before we go any further uh, into setting this up and showing you, uh, there's three documents here that I'm going to post on my website along with the article to this step for VPN on this router. And it basically is the help file. This is the help file uh, that pops up from the bottom uh, so that you can have it right in front of you uh, if you don't currently belong uh, or own this router. So you can see for yourself whether you're going to buy it or not or whatever. So let's open this back up again. Now, when you want to set up a VPN service, um, there the internet, you on the other end of the internet outside of your home needs to know how to get into uh, your router. So uh, when you have VPN service here, here's the panel for it and you click on enable VPN and you hit apply and you get a message, an error message that says dynamic DNS service is suggested to be used along with the VPN service. Please make sure you uh, will enable the dynamic DNS service or use a static IP address uh, for, uh, for your internet connection. Now what that means is you can't just say hey uh, here's a VPN service and then connect into it. You, you have to, it, it has to be able to be found. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to tell you what people use VPNs for. First things first is you want to hide your ass uh, from your ISP or other websites that will know exactly what ISP you use, internet service provider you use, and what town you live in, and where exactly, uh, who you are, because they'll report you to your internet service provider and possibly you can get in big trouble if you're downloading or doing illegal internet activity, downloading movies and things like that. The other reason is people want to keep themselves safe. So when they're on the Wi-Fi in a public building, or Starbucks, they don't want other people to be able to be on the same Wi-Fi and tunnel in, uh, snoop into their, into their computer and get all their valuable information. Now another reason that you use a VPN service is maybe you're away in college and you're trying to access Netflix but you're in another 
countries, say, for instance, and you're trying to get Netflix, but Netflix says, oh, wait a minute, you're from another country. So you can use this VPN service, uh, server in the United States or your home uh, internet, just like if you're sitting in front of your computer at home. So those are the three reasons why people use VPNs. And what's great about this router is it allows you to go into, with your phone, say, for instance, and you start searching the internet, it's actually tunneling in and your router is doing the searching for you and then sending results back to you. Now, with that comes a little compromise. This is a little bit slower internet than if you were actually in your home because it has to be encrypted in a tunnel uh, and you know everything has to be reprocessed and sent back to you. So I'm not 100% sure because I tested it out after I had it all set up because I've done this a bunch of times. When I'm sitting at work, uh, miles and miles away, I connect to the VPN in this router, and I type in the word, what is my IP? And if I type that in, it should show my IP address, my external IP address in this house with this internet service provider. But it does, it shows my job's IP. But it probably is keeping me safe or doing whatever, but I'm not 100% sure. You have to be the judge of that. I, I I can't I, I think it's because we're using the DNS service and it's not exactly a IP server that we're connecting to. We're connecting through a DNS and over. Now let me just show you now in steps what we do. So we got that error message, and there's two ways to connect in with the TUN and the TAP. Okay, you'll have to look that up to see for yourself. Now you can go auto, but I did all sites on the internet and home network. So everything that is when I'm connected to the VPN everything that I search goes through my router at home so we'll do it that way now it said set up dynamic DNS so here's dynamic DNS and what happens is you click on it and it'll tell you it'll ask you uh, do you have a DNS service and it gives you three options uh, there's a website called uh, www.no-ip.com and that's a DNS service. And they'll give you a free account, but it expires every 30 days, and you have to visit the site and just reconnect again. Or use the firmware here to reconnect into it again. Now, Nick here also uses no IP, and you get that free account, and your uh, your thing will say dot. You'll, you'll, you'll set up a username. So let's do that. Let's, let's make pretend that I don't have it. Now, this is the same for... Um, no IP as well as Netgear. Uh, the, so down here it asks you, so we say no, we have that checked off, and we down here we're going to type in whatever we want to use as a username. So I'm going to do ask Uncle Dave, okay? And it says that there's one available, so we're going to go in here, and I'll just put an email address. And I'll put a, I'll make up a password. Okay, so I'm all set now. I have all this here, and I'm going to hit register. So I'm going to register, and it's going to give me that free 30-day at a time uh, DNS service. It's going to know what my external IP address is, and when I connect with the VPN, in the next step, it's going to know that. It has to go to no IP. It has to figure out what my external is, and then it's going to serve it right back to me. And I'll show you that what I mean. So now we have it all set up here. Now let's just go to the website um, for my account. I'm going to type in no IP. All right. So no IP, and here's no IP. Let's make that full screen, and I'm going to sign in. Okay. So here's my sign in. The same one that I just typed in when I created the account. So we we log in, and you're going to see here that um, if I go to the free my free account here, you're going to see Ask Uncle Dave at mynetgear.com, and it's going to have my target IP. That's my IP that you don't want nobody to know, uh, especially a detective or whatever. 
or some hacker or whatever. You don't want them to know where you live. So this is what your address is here, DNS. So now, now that you have the DNS, okay, you go back into your router. So let's go back into the router right there. And we're going to go to VPN service now. And now when we click here and we hit apply, it's not going to give us an error message. It's going to let us connect into it. So this happens automatically. You just have to change a couple of things if you want to. You could do all internet outside of the house. And there's instructions here. There's an app called OpenVPN. This only works with OpenVPN. If you have OpenVPN app installed on your mobile devices or installed on a computer, okay, you can access this VPN tunnel to your home network, okay? Um, so if I wanted to do it for smartphone, I can click here, all right? And what's going to happen is there's a file that's going to be downloaded to whatever I'm using here. Now I'm going to take this file, okay, and I'm going to actually uh, email it to myself, all right? So I email it to myself because this is the, uh, let me open it here. Actually, it won't open, but I can email it to myself. So let me go ahead and email it to myself, and then I'll see the email on my phone, and there'll be a little file attached to it, and this file will be called uh, smartphone OVPN, so open VPN. And what that is, is a set of instructions that tell the mobile open VPN app what DNS to look at, you know, the address, the credentials. It will also say, you know, this is the Netgear, this is the IP, this is how you get in and all that stuff. So it has all the information right on that file. So now we're gonna to go to our mobile device and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, okay? So let me connect this to the computer. All right, so I have the OpenVPN app installed on my iPhone. I'm gonna open it up and you can see that there's nothing in it. It's just bare bone. Uh, so we're gonna go into my mail and I emailed myself that small tiny uh, little file, the open VPN uh, configuration file. And if you click it and you have the app installed on your phone, you could scroll over and you can uh, open in uh, or open with with Android. And you could see it here that you can hit the plus sign here and it'll add that configuration. In. Now, this web address, askuncledave.mynetgear.com because you're using the DNS servers, it knows what that external IP address is. And it associates that with this link. So it gets put into the OpenVPN, and now you have it there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, come out of our Wi-Fi, because you can't be on the same Wi-Fi in the house and try to access in the house. So we'll turn off our Wi-Fi. Uh, let me make sure it's off. Okay. And then I'm going to do the open VPN. Now it connects. If I had my Wi-Fi on because I'm in my home, it would give me an error message. But here it is, uh, the open VPN. Let me uh, close this app out real quick like this and open it because then you could see in the settings up here that it says VPN right next to the upper left corner there. So I'm VPN in. It's got my service uh, uh, server IP and I'm using right now I'm using uh, at and I'm not using um, I'm not using my my router okay see my Wi-Fi is off now uh, it shows that little um, you know symbol for Wi-Fi there uh, but it's not really there so this is it in settings and uh, they want you to use the app when you turn it on and off don't turn it on and off from the settings so now I am connected in and if we type in, you know, what's my IP, I'll do what's my IP. We could click that, and you can see that I have the 18T's Wi-Fi. But in the app itself, it said that I'm connected to my uh, house. So why is it showing up here as my Wi-Fi for my 18T? So I'm not convinced that it's actually protecting you uh, or protecting you know it's not registering you as your home IP address 
this is basically just to tunnel in uh, to your VPN. Well, maybe it's not. You tell me in the comments. I, I, it, it shows my, my AT&T, so I don't get it. So the other way you can connect instead of a dynamic DNS service is to make your router a static IP. Now what they mean by static and dynamic IP is every day your router changes its external IP. Not the one that your ISP, uh, you know, where, where it shows where your ISP is, but the external one that websites get. Uh, so they kind of get an idea of what's, you know, what cookies to give you or whatever it is. But that constantly changes and it'll be hard for a mobile device to tunnel into your router with that thing always changing. So if you change it to a static IP, static means still, you know, like that's it. It stops changing. It stays the same, your internal and your external IP so that you can get into your router and use the VPN service that way. So in order to do that, you can add and you can go into, uh, you know, like private and you can put a name for your, for the router. Uh, you can call it, you know, the AD7200 or Netgear or whatever. And then you have to put the uh, destination IP address, which is like 255, 255, 255, and then 17 or whatever it is. So uh, you have to put the IP uh, subnet and then the gateway and you can read the help files that I'll have at my website. Uh, it'll tell you a little bit more about what you need to do there. But I'm not really into static IPs because I do want mine to modulate uh, all the time. So I think the best way is with the DNS service you let me know in the comments what you think about this VPN. Is it worth it? Should you pay the 10 to $20 a month for a private VPN that you actually, when you type in what's my IP, uh, it gives you their IP address? Or do you want to take the chance, roll the dice, use your mobile phone, connect it to your home, and get caught out there? Who knows? You wouldn't be connecting to your home Wi-Fi anyway if you were doing things like downloading movies anyway because it's not shielded. You want to put a VPN service. So you tell me in the comments what you think. And if there's any other videos that you want me to cover uh, about this router, let me know. I'm not going to have it for long because it's too expensive. Number one. Number two, I already have a Plex server on a NAS uh, with 24 terabytes of storage. And I also already have uh, great routers. I have a uh, Airport Extreme, and I also have a hacked uh, old N600 Netgear router with a VPN service installed, baked in, so that I can connect to that router and I can get out. There's videos about it. I'll put the link in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Have any questions, let me know, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you.